a lot of new Apple patents have been thrown around and you know that doesn't guarantee anything. Apple patents are usually just the R&D department making sure legally they're covered to explore things that they have yet to explore. It doesn't mean a product's coming but I think it's worth at least a discussion about what these new patents could mean. As Tim Cook has said augmented reality is a big part of Apple's future and these new patents reveal kind of displays working on glasses. Bottom line is Apple is probably moving its way into augmented reality or at least dipping their toe into the pool. So this isn't a product coming soon probably not definitely not next year probably not 2018 maybe it's 2019 so we're talking kind of distant apple here but you know it's very rare that apple unveils a new product line the last one was the apple watch and we haven't really heard of a follow-up since then because there was talks about the apple car and more recently we've discovered that isn't really a hardware program they're working on so they're not going to be competing with tesla but they're more just working on more advanced car os kind of stuff less exciting but there's something i think apple has to get key with with whatever it's gonna be called. My guess is Apple Glass? Apple Glasses? Eyeglass? Eyeglasses? One of those. Let's just stick with Apple Glass for now. One key thing they have to remember is that it cannot be a standalone product for a couple reasons. First of all, Apple cannot afford to tell their users they don't need to buy an iPhone anymore. The iPhone is the hottest selling product they have across everything they've ever made. And they are nowhere near the time to say, this new device we've created can replace your iPhone. The iPhone's just cheap enough so that everyday people can buy it, but also more rich people can enjoy it as well. And the thing with Apple Glass is it's not gonna be that cheap. I think Apple Glass has to be similar to the way the Apple Watch is to the iPhone. The Apple Watch is not a standalone device, but it makes using your iPhone way more elegant and it makes managing notifications way, way easier. I think Apple Glass could do the same thing. I have not really touched much on augmented reality in my videos. And that's really because I don't think anyone's gotten it right. We all remember Google Glass and how Google doesn't even want you to remember that. And I think the biggest problem with Google Glass was everyone trying to think this is the next big thing this can replace the smartphone maybe they weren't even thinking it could replace it it was just the fact that it was trying to be its own device here's the issue with augmented reality it's not something you hold and it's not even something you look at which makes it socially even more awkward than a smartwatch you know when smartwatches came out it was kind of weird that we would be you know fiddling on this thing for more than just a few seconds because before you know you could just check your watch and that's all you needed to do and i still do that a lot except now i'm not just checking the time i'm also checking notifications and now if I'm using Scribble or something, I can be on here for quite a while. Socially, that's kind of weird, but it's not that bad. Like people can get used to that and people can obviously see, oh, he's using a smartwatch. But if Apple Glass wants to sell, first of all, it has to be fashionable. You can't have that giant blocky modular looking Google Glass thing and expect people to buy that. No one's gonna wear that in public. And if they do, they're gonna look like an idiot. But Google Glass's way of interface was for you to stroke the side of the glasses. And the problem with that is you're kind of interacting with something, but your eyes don't know what to do and that's kind of a rare thing with a product most tech things we design today we can look at and look away from that way people around us know what we're paying attention to with augmented reality glasses you can't do that you have to put your eyes somewhere and no matter where you're directing your eyes if there's an interface between you and the glasses it's going to look very bizarre so with google glass you would sit in a starbucks and do this you know just just browsing my apps looking at instagram and you'd end up staring at someone at the other side of the store and they don't even realize it because you're just using google glass and then they're kind of getting freaked out and you're just like, oh, interesting. Because it's not just a functionality of a device that helps itself. I think a lot of companies forget about the social aspect. I think it's the reason a lot of Bluetooth earpieces never sold that well. I remember back in 2009 here in California, they were about to make it illegal for you to talk on the phone while driving. So everyone was talking about how Bluetooth earpieces, since those are legal, that'll be everywhere. And in the future, everyone's gonna have a Bluetooth earpiece. And we all know how much of a jerk people look like when they have an earpiece in and they're in public, right? Just talking to themselves in a subway, eating a sandwich and just you know talking and talking everyone in the store is looking at you like you're crazy that social aspect is a hard sell all of a sudden though if you're in a subway have one of these and you're talking to that everything makes sense now no one's questioning why you're talking to yourself they know you're talking to something and at least with a smartwatch you're interacting with something now that we're designing tech that goes on our heads you have to be really careful about the social aspect the other more newer version of augmented reality is the microsoft hololens which i'm not quite sure what they're going for it's totally something microsoft would do though microsoft 
Microsoft has realized that they cannot appeal to the broad audience with mobile products. Windows 10 Mobile is not very popular. Less than 1% of the market, we know this. So what Microsoft's doing now, obviously, is breaching into how many pro markets can we touch into? And that's not a lot of people, but we can charge a lot for those markets and therefore make quite a bit of money that can keep us afloat. So this is easy to prove. Just look at the Surface Studio. Really cool, appeals to professionals, but you know, starting price of three grand. You don't have to sell a lot of them, but there's your niche. Same with the Surface Book. Pretty pricey for a laptop, but it can do a lot of things professionals like, as in the drawing and having a dedicated GPU for 3D modeling, stuff like that. It's directed niche audiences, mostly in the professional field. And the HoloLens fits into that. It's three grand, but it's really only good for developers. I don't think the HoloLens is very practical for any consumer. There are games you can play with it, but you're gonna look like you have some kind of disorder. You look around the room doing this. I'm in the future. Woo. And it's huge. Totally not fashionable in the slightest. Google Glass at least tried, but I don't blame Microsoft for that because I don't think that was the intention. It was made for, you know, people doing kind of construction work, people trying to follow tutorials, and again, it's a fun thing for professionals to use. And more and more as years come, they'll be able to apply it to everyday work. But the HoloLens is not meant for average consumers, which is what Apple is more focused on. Their marketing is more towards everyday people, people with iPhones, because that's what's sold the best, right? So here's my perfect vision for Apple Glass Vision Glass. Yeah. It's, there's jokes. I don't think the Apple Glass should have any form of interaction. I know that sounds crazy, but there's still a whole lot of things you can add to your lifestyle. So what I'm saying is I don't want you scrolling on the side of the glasses because your eyes are gonna be confused. I don't want you doing this in midair because then everyone looking at you is gonna be like, okay, okay. I think it should tether to your phone, but change things you do in everyday life in every way you use your Apple devices. Something you could do if you have hologram technology in front of someone's eyes is project project 3D objects onto anything. I think Apple will have a good sell with this. My idea is that you could take out your phone and if you're wearing Apple Glass, you can have more customizable widgets pop out from the side or top of your phone. Like it's the actual future. You know, have the little 3D widgets pop out from the side. Same with the Apple Watch. Every time you check it, it tells you the time, of course, on the display, but then also Apple Glass will project the weather on your arm. And right above the Apple Watch, it'll show all the new messages you have. And of course, I guarantee you if Apple makes an August augmented reality glasses, one of the first things they'll make sure you can do is drive on the road and if you're using Apple Maps, it will highlight the road blue so that you don't have to look down at your phone or look at your Apple Watch to see when the next turn is. The road will just be blue in front of you and you can just follow that. That I guarantee, it's totally something Apple will do and it's a really great augmented reality feature that's very simple, I'm sure. You could even have really basic widgets on Apple Glass and like I said, they're not interactive but they're there and you can customize them via an app on your iPhone. So so let's say your three activity rings on your Apple Watch, they're kind of gray and off to the side of your vision at all times. Of course, if you want it there, if you don't, that's fine. Or if you get a text or a notification of any kind, it kind of creeps into your peripherals a bit right here. That way, if you're talking to someone or if you're in the middle of something, you can see who texted you a little bit of their message and know, okay, I can get my phone out or I don't need to get my phone out. That could be really effective notification delivery as well as adding all kinds of features to the devices you already have. Imagine pulling out your iPad and if you have Apple Glass, suddenly you can add two, three monitors to your iPad and have a video playing on one and have Facebook on one. And I don't know, you're texting someone on the iPad screen itself. That's what I think Apple should do with Apple Glass. If they do figure out an intuitive way to interact with it, I'm sure I'll like it. I'm sure I'll be all for it. I just don't think this or this is gonna be a key part in our augmented reality future. So of course the door is wide open because this is all speculation and rumors. Tell me what you think Apple should do with Apple Glass. You have any better ideas for the name? Put them down there. Apple Glass just rolls off the tongue really well though. And of course it'll hold up to the Apple stereotype. You want my estimation? I'm afraid it's gonna start at $2,500. Yeah, I'm pretty sure about that. Could be even worse. I'm gonna say the range could start from $2,500, maybe four grand. Just because Google Glass was $1,800 and the HoloLens is three grand. Apple's gonna make sure this stuff is thin and that it's light. And thin and light computers are very, very expensive. And of course this would be the first of its kind for Apple in most of the industry. So hold me to that. 25 to four grand. It will not be for everyday people at first and over time it will get cheaper and more and more people will buy it. This is your Apple Sheep here and I will see you in the next one.